baby. Come here. No, 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 no. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that that doesn't happen. But why does he want to kill Lucy? No, he, he doesn't want to do that. We're, we're just trying to figure out what's best for her. Will you do me a favor? Will you go back in there and spend some time with Lucy in there? Okay? Come on, sweetheart. I'll, um, I'll take you in there. I have to answer that, but I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay? You go ahead and go in. Mr. Baldwin, why are you so unwilling to adhere to Miss Coe's wishes? I thought she was your friend. She is my friend, and she can't speak for herself right now. She has an advanced directive, which essentially says that she doesn't want you to interfere. Let me just tell you something. You're crazy. If you think I'm going to let you go in there and pull that plug on her. You have no say in this. I have a court order. Ripping it up does not invalidate it. I don't care if the Supreme Court marches in there one by one. No one is taking her off that ventilator. Hiding from me? I don't understand. I have been so worried about you, and now I find you here? I suppose this would all make sense if we were in junior high school. Look, whatever it is, please just tell me. No more lies. you're explaining all this to me try not to use phrases like it's not what you think and this has nothing to do with you i haven't been hiding from you but i have been hiding why i've been in the witness protection program since i was a teenager so you're saying that you're one of those people that testify at some gangling trial and then disappear off the face of the earth you went to med school you became a doctor you came to poor charles it's all part of the program have you known this all along? No, I found out while treating Matt, after the bomb exploded. Bomb? Was it an accident in the garage? When I went out of town, I was in Philadelphia, testifying against a member of the Mancusi organization. Somehow they found out where I was staying. They tried to kill you. It's not the first time. You weren't paralyzed in a skiing accident, were you? No. I was shot in the back. When Matt left the hospital so suddenly, it was because he'd found a note in his locker that said they'd found him. Now may I use phrases like, it's not what you think, and this has nothing to do with you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, um, I thought, well, you know what I thought. I am just, I'm so glad to see you. Suppose I allow the ventilator to stay in place. What's next? When I come into the hospital tomorrow, are you going to have her hooked up to a heart lung? Dialysis? Exactly. If we have Hi. to, yes. She's trying to talk, but no words are coming out. Who is? Lucy. Lucy? Lucy? There's 
starting to breathe on her own. I'm going to wean you off this ventilator. Now you give me any indication if you have difficulty breathing. Good. I think we can have that tube out of your throat in no time. the Brady girl with epiglottitis. Now, how'd you know it wasn't just the croup? Well, it's cold outside today. Normal case of the croup would have responded to the cool air, but the infant's drooling and odd coloring were so pronounced that I knew something was wrong. That was a good catch. Your quick thinking might have just saved that little girl's life. Least, it stopped her condition from progressing, and I am impressed. Well, thank you. Coming from you, that's quite a compliment. Dr. May, Dr. Ramsey, the kid in 432 is having respiratory distress. We need you right away. You know, uh, you gave them all quite a scare. <sighs> well, how am I? <sighs> so far, so good. <clears throat> now, we're going to continue to monitor your progress. How do you feel? because of the ventilator. Now, it's going to be a little scratchy for the next couple of days. Hi, it's too early for visitors. Uh, come in. Hi. Hi. Wow. <clears throat> you realize, of course, you, you saved my life. How can I ever thank you? <laughs> you don't have to. We're just so happy that you're okay. <laughs> Scanlon and Wexler. Excellent job. Thank you, sir. But it wasn't just us. All the interns worked very hard. Could you please thank them for me? We will, but I have to tell you, Karen here deserves most of the credit. I mean, she's the one who came up with the proper dosage. I'm just so relieved. No, I will never, ever forget what you did for me, ever. And I will never, ever forget what you did for Scott and Serena. I think I'm really getting addicted to having such wonderful friends. Listen, so there'll be plenty of time to talk later on. So there we were in the back of a windowless, bulletproof van on our way out of town. And I said, I don't want to do this anymore. You can do that? Well, they tried to convince me not to. But they can't force you. It's a voluntary program. And eventually they brought me back here. So what now? You certainly can't spend the rest of your life in Ellen's apartment. Well, you certainly can't go back to the hospital either. Not after finding that note. Well, I've been giving that a lot of thought. I don't believe the Mancusis are the ones threatening me. Now, how can you think they don't know where you are if you got a note saying I found you? It's not the Mancusi way to send warnings, Grace. Nobody warned me before they shot me in the back. And there wasn't some cryptic note on the hotel room tray saying, I hope you like the salad before the bomb went off. So who left the note? I don't know. But if the Mancusis had found me, they would have left something a lot more lethal than a note in my locker. I can't imagine what it must have felt like to find a note like that. I wasn't sure I'd make it out of the hospital alive. So I did everything I was trained to do. I just dropped everything and left, intending never to look back. What changed your mind? Well, I decided I didn't want to give up on being a doctor until I had all the facts. It's not the Mancusis, but there's something going on here, and I'm going to find out what it is. Well, you did very well in there. You're able to stay calm and focused during a crisis. That's an essential trait in a doctor. Well, kids are already so scared, I just try to remain calm for them. Littlest patients seem to need that the most. I feel the same way. Chris, I'm going to be honest with you. I read all the evaluations of you interns before you started the uh -oh. rotation. Relax. Now, I find myself wondering why Dr. Devlin and I are in such disagreement over your abilities as a doctor. Well, Dr. Devlin has a personal grudge against me. Do you know why? I have no idea. But it's almost as if he were deliberately trying to knock me out of the running for the quarter main residency. I see. 
Well, maintain the level of work that you exhibited to me today, and you might just earn my vote for that award. I cannot believe how quickly she is recovered. Listen to me. You did this. You saved me. No, we did this. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that lab work was so exhilarating, wasn't it? Oh, you mean reading those dry texts and working and reworking those formulas that led us nowhere? Yes, yes, because we knew that any moment we could crack this whole thing wide open, we could find the answer. I mean, you were able to narrow that field down to that one plant family, and by the time Scott got there with the ingredients, we were already on our way. <sighs> well, what if I was wrong? What if I was wrong after we worked so hard? I, I guessed the wrong thing. You weren't wrong, and you didn't just guess. You applied what you learned over the last two weeks, that's all. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to celebrate this. Well, I know just the thing. Let's see, we've both been up for over 36 hours. We're exhausted. I suggest long periods of uninterrupted sack time. Sack time, huh? You know, you got the right location, but you have got the wrong activity. <laughs> you and me in bed for periods of long, uninterrupted activity, but we're not going to be sleeping. Mm -hmm. Dr. Eve, congratulations. On what? I heard the ad hoc poison control team saved Lucy. Yeah, she's recovering nicely. I'm glad that's over with. Now we can all go back to being ourselves. I don't know, Eve. I mean, I saw some of those photos from the modeling shoot, and hmm, I think maybe you missed your calling. No, thank you. I'm just very happy to be going back to being the plain old brilliant doctor that I am. Well, I'm looking forward to getting back to just one shift a day. Oh, you are so full of it. You loved pulling double shifts, and you know it because it gave you that much more opportunity to kiss butt. <laughs> you think that with Matt gone on this mysterious leave of absence, it means that you're that much closer to winning the Quartermain. In fact, you've been sucking up so hard to Dr. May that your cheeks are sunken in. Dr. May happens to be a very perceptive and extremely influential member of this hospital staff, one who can appreciate a hard-working, exceptionally talented intern such as myself. You think you've won the quarter main already, don't you? <laughs> you don't presume to think you have a chance, do you? Well, actually, the evaluation board seems to think that I do. Hmm. Well, would you care to put a small side wager on that? I don't know, say something... Oh my gosh, Matt, you're back. Hey, we thought you were gone for good. Yeah, no such luck. Oh. Hey, good to see you. Yeah. So what happened? Well, the simple version is that I just wasn't ready to come back to work. My recent accident was a lot more serious than I was willing to admit. It gave me a lot to think about. See, Chris, I told you he wasn't in Bermuda. Yeah, I know you guys all had to work really hard while I was gone. First when I got injured, and then when I suddenly took off, I'm very sorry. Uh, what are friends for? You already proved that to me, Chris. You probably saved my life. Gave me the chance to come back here and be a doctor. That's all I really wanted to do. I won't forget that. Anyway, enough of this. I have a ton of work to do to make up for all the work you guys did while I was missing in action, so... <laughs> There is one patient in particular I am anxious to see. See you later. Bye. See you. Did you hear that, Chris? He's going to work even harder to make it up to us. Bye-bye, Quartermain Residency. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Go away. Bye-bye. Joe Scanlon, you're exhausting. <laughs> Me, that was all you. I was just along for the ride. Oh. You know, it was awful for Lucy to go through what she did, but I have to admit, that research was really exciting. I'm sorry. For what? Well, here I am talking shop. 
Mm. I'm not complaining at all. Yeah, I know, but I should be, you know. You're telling me what a stud I am? <laughs> mm. You know, I think research is uh, some kind of weird aphrodisiac for you. So, <laughs> maybe. Mm. You know, the great thing about research, though, is that you can find an answer to something that no one else has. It's amazing. I want to do more of it. You barely have time as it is. I know. I'll find time. I do have to admit that the side benefits are kind of nice. You like that? Mm-hmm. You think so? Let me try a little experiment here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most poisonous plants mm -hmm. contain biologically active ordinary ammonium salts. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you don't say. Choline <laughs> and acetylcholine <laughs> are involved in the transmission. This week I agreed with him that it would be best if everyone left so you could get some rest. I am so very, very sorry for everything I've put you through. You tried and tried and tried to tell me, but I just, I wouldn't listen. I guess I'm just so darn stubborn. Well, what you call stubborn, I call passionate. But all my passion seems to keep getting me in trouble. Yes, that's true. But it's also that same passion that saves Serena. And it's that passion that I fell so madly, deeply in love with. Well, I could try just being a little less passionate, huh? <laughs> Don't you dare. I want you just the way you are. Say, Lucy, why don't we just take a date, tell the world, and get married? Hey, right. Doctor Cheerleader returns. <laughs> Thought you bailed on this place. Oh, I just had to take care of some business. I'm back, Bill. Hey, congratulations is in order here. You had your first rehab session. How'd that go? It sucked. <laughs> and I could barely do anything. I'm a freaking weakling. Yeah, you're right. But hey, Keith, that'll change. Were you like me at first? Everybody is. Conditioning your upper body to manage your lower body tough but no doubt about it it's not impossible someday you're going to be big and strong like me <laughs> something to look forward to mm. so you're not taking off again are you no i'm not going anywhere
is Charles Gibson. And Lisa McCree. The hitch to getting hitched after 35. What you need to know. Plus, our countdown to the Oscars continues with nominee Joan Cusack. That's tomorrow on Good Morning America. Will Allie confess to her lie before David reveals her secret? Find out why everybody's watching All My Children today.